Today we're going to take the beams, columns and walls of this parametric model which is using Grasshopper with Rhino inside Revit into this fully framed Revit structural model where it's easy to cut plans and sections. And just a reminder, you can get more tutorials like this under this section on our website. We've got quite a list now and you can also download some of the free tutorial scripts in this section here. And feel free to have a look at some of our other services if you're interested. We've got conversion, smart tools, reinforcement, etc. Okay, so from a clean Revit template, I'm going to go to add-ins and Rhino. And I'm going to go straight into the Grasshopper window. And I'll load a file I've already built. If you want to see examples of these type of scripts, have a look at some of our other videos. But basically it's a, I'm going to make it a timber structure. And if I adjust the sliders, you'll see that one of the spans there expands and you can see the truss also moves along with it. If I move the other span, you can see the script updates and if I want to close up the centers of the beams, I can just do that with a number here. So now I want to bring Revit elements to assign to this structure, this structure outline. And as the output of the script, I've just isolated the truss members, the longitudinal truss elements, columns, and the two types of beams, an outline of the floor and an outline of the roof. So you'll notice when you have Grasshopper running inside Rhino, you'll get some new Revit primitives under parameters. Out of these, the most important are graphical element which can get things from Rhino into Grasshopper. But as we're getting stuff from Grasshopper into, into Revit, the most important for us here are category, family and type. So the way I'm going to use those, if I go to the Revit tab, which also pops up when you run Grasshopper under Rhino, under Revit, sorry. We're going to be using Build, which has beams and columns and stuff. We're going to be using Categories, as I said, and Families and Types. As a brief overview for those who aren't familiar with Revit, categories... So if you're not familiar with how Revit organizes information, basically you have categories at the, at the top, and there's four types of those. We're only really going to use model here. So if I know we're going to use model, I'm going to go to input, and use the model category picker. And under this, we have all the Revit types of things. So it's a long list, but I need to look at structural stuff. So my first one is going to be structural beams, or structural um, framing, I should say. So this isolates just the structural framing category from all the other stuff you can do in Revit. So now that I've got the structural framing category, I can get all the families or I can go straight to getting the types. So I'm going to go straight to getting the types with query types. And here you can put in category and the family name. So if I load 
that into there, you can see it's picked up all the families, uh, the types, sorry, that are available in structural framing that are loaded into this Revit file. So you can see I've got a universal column, a welded beam, and three UB beams, which are Australian steel beam types. And that's all it can find in this current template. Now I want to build this structure in timber, so how do I get a timber member? Well basically you go into insert here and load a family. Now here I've got Australian stuff. So under structural framing, wood, and I'm going to use glue lamb here, western species. Now that I've loaded that, you can see it's found two glue lamb western species um, types. Now all I want is that glue lamb, so I'm just going to isolate that by simply typing this in. And like anything else, there's other ways of doing this. So in family name, I can say only glue lamb western species families, please. Now I want to make these beams. So if I go back to the Revit tab and say add beam, you can see I've got a curve, a type, and a level. So the type, we already have two types loaded into the Revit file. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use list item with an index of zero. So that just gives me one type. So it'll only use one type of beam. Put that into type. Level, if I go to Revit, that's under input and level picker. I'm going to say level one and then we can put some curves into it. But before that, I'm going to put a bit of control in it by using stream filter and a button. Because as Grasshopper works, it, it does things live into the window of um, Revit, but I want to have a bit more control and just do it once because otherwise you get doubled up elements. You don't have to do this and it normally does work, but this is just a safer way of doing it. So at level one, I'm going to put my primary beams into one. So whenever I press the button, the output will be those primary beams. So if I put that in there, Obviously there's nothing yet, but then I press the button and there it's inserted those timber beams at level one. Now if I add secondary beams as well, you can see it's added in the secondary beams. Now I'm gonna add the columns in. Now for Revit, it treats columns very differently to beams. So I'm just going to copy this couple of components. I'll get rid of beam and I'll build add column. So instead of structural framing, Revit has a separate category. So if I go down to structural columns, now you can see, again, it's found no structural columns. So again, I have to load a family. It's not under structural framing, it's under structural columns. If 
wood, glue lamb, western species. Now, if I disconnect this, you can see the columns that are available are the UC and two glue lamps that I've just added. But you have to add the hyphen column there. So yeah, every time you work with columns, everything's just slightly different. Oops, column. Okay, and we're selecting one column. Now I'm going to change that column because it's not a very good size for me. So if I go to, I'll just grab the properties here. I'm just going to edit the type. <clears throat> and I'm just going to duplicate that. I'm going to make a 250 x 250. column and I just change the properties here now if I just reconnect that it's got my type in there it's the third item so index 2 that gives me the column I want so again level type and the columns are here so I'll put them into my one in the filter just so it'll only activate when I press the button so now if I do that it's brought them in okay next up I'm going to do some structural bracing walls So wall is over here, add wall curve. You can do profile as well if it's got an opening in it. Again, I'm just going to copy a lot of this stuff. I'll get rid of that. I'll make it level one. The type is wall. Um, if I disconnect this, in fact, I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm just going to say it's wall one is the one I want, so that's index zero. That's the type. And then I just need a curve. Now, for the curve, I've just written this little. Uh, picker which chooses the wall that I want the wall panel as you go around so I'm just going to attach this one for now and it's brought it in that bottom line I'm just going to change the height to three and a half meters so my little picker is just drawing a line at the base of the columns. So as I move it around, the wall just rotates around the building, around the perimeter where you want the bracing. I can add a second story wall as well. So I've got upper and lower. And then I can also combine that with my filter which I should have done before anyway and then if I move to the next spot there we go Now I'm going to add the floor quickly and to speed up the video 
I know I've only got one floor type in the whole Revit file. So all I need is the boundary because the type will be the only type it can find and a level. So I'm going to make it level one and I've already got the boundary here. Just here, it's just a perimeter curve around the floor. And there's the floor in Revit. Finally, I'm just going to add those truss members as beams along with the others. So there's all the framing in there. I'm just going to clean it up a bit and we can have a look at it in Revit. So if I maximize this, I'm just going to change the graphics to realistic. And there's our timber structure. I've just adjusted some of the heights of the beams, but it's basically all there. And you've got, uh, obviously you can get your plans out pretty quickly and sections, etc. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.